دین که نگی و لوس دوله و حاوی اگر نه دولا دو بدن آو یورپ آو مراکن آو انگلیس یا کوه آفریکانه یا گاندیس یا برندیس یا بلاان لقونیل این تبا و حالا که نی و حاوی این دین تن این لذت را a graduation ceremony for around 200 Al-Shabaab fighters, the latest recruits for the militants that rule over a third of Somalia. Their face is covered so they can operate anonymously. They are fighting to overthrow the internationally recognized government of Somalia. إن أنكر تقنو ديدنو الله أكبر الله أكبر These soldiers will be sent on missions to carry out attacks against the Somali government as well as African Union troops stationed here and in neighboring countries. They have undergone several months of intense training to become battle ready. They might not want to reveal their identities but they do want to show their force. Uniforms, guns, vehicles, all spoils of war stolen from their enemies and of course the essential mark for sweet tea. Notoriously suspicious, they rarely give access to outsiders. I'm the first journalist allowed to film them in years. <laughs> Standing in front of them is Mahat Karate, his nickname and nod to his extensive martial arts training. He was once a Somali government intelligence officer who is now one of Al-Shabaab's most senior leaders. Al-Shabaab was formed in 2002 and came to prominence in 2006 when Ethiopia invaded Somalia. A few years later, they pledged allegiance to Al-Qaeda. The militants have carried out wave after wave of attacks over the years, targeting the African Union forces who are here to protect the Somali state. But civilians are often the victims. This explosion in 2017 killed over 500 people in Mogadishu. The US and Europe have spent billions of dollars to try to defeat them. President Biden recently announced that U.S. soldiers would once again be stationed here. Western nations regard Al-Shabaab as a terrorist organization that's causing havoc and instability in the East Africa region. That's why they have been targeting their leaders with drone strikes, funding the African Union mission and supporting the Somali government. But after 16 years of fighting to eliminate the militants, Al-Shabaab still remain strong. I have come to the group's heartland to find out why. This is the de facto capital of Al-Shabaab, the city of Jilip in southern Somalia. I'm being given a tour by the governor and one of the group's most senior leaders, Sheikh Mohammed Abu Abdullah. He takes me to a checkpoint where all vehicles coming into the region are searched. Each vehicle has to pay between 200 and 1500 US dollars to pass through, depending on the size and the goods they are carrying. They collect millions of dollars of taxes a month to fund their military campaign and their efforts to build a state. There is also some more unusual contraband. Plastic bags are banned in Al-Shabaab territory. <laughs> Yeah. 
Their environmental policies might be the same, but the UK government considers them one of the most dangerous terrorist organizations in Africa. The governor himself has a bounty on his head and has survived multiple assassination attempts. As he shows me around, he argues the perception of al-Shabaab is not accurate. He takes me to the main hospital where they have invested $2 million to build new departments. I have come across this billboard. You might not believe this message is from Al-Shabaab, but it reads, Your opinion is important. Your complaints will be listened. With Al-Shabaab's reputation, are people really brave enough to complain? The suggestion box is just a few hundred yards from where they carry out regular public executions under the governor's supervision. Next, Abu Abdullah takes me to a food distribution center. He tells me they are trying to establish a welfare state. I ask him if this was a strategy to win public support. And that's what I've seen in the past. This region is the most fertile land in Somalia, but elsewhere in the country there is severe drought. Humanitarian agencies warn that millions are at risk of starvation. It's hard to know whether people are only supporting the group in exchange for food. I wanted to find out what residents in Jilip who aren't reliant on handouts think. So I head into town on my own that evening. I stop at Abdurrahman's barber shop. He's originally from Hargeisa in northern Somalia, but moved here six years ago. <laughs> But there's another reason too. In Al-Shabaab areas, drugs are strictly forbidden. Abdurrahman was once an addict, but the restrictions have helped him kick his habit. There is little crime here in Jilib due to a heavy Al-Shabaab security presence and brutal punishments. Thieves have their hands and feet cut off. But they are not just here to prevent crime. Their role is also to implement strict Islamic rules. <laughs> In the past, people who were caught would be punished, but they are now taking a softer approach as part of their strategy to win public support. Al Shabab's goal is to govern the whole of Somalia under strict Sharia law. And that means educating future generations to create a loyal following.
children wear what are considered to be Al-Shabaab symbols on their foreheads. The group have opened dozens of schools, teaching subjects like computer science, maths and English alongside Al-Shabaab ideology. You have to be able to describe peer-to-peer -peer versus server-based networks. Ummu Muhammad has six children. Al-Shabaab are often compared to the Taliban, but they encourage women like her to work and girls to go to school. They also don't force women to cover their faces, although some do. The women, they work. Al-Shabaab, they are just to work. They don't force you to stay at home, but they encourage us to come out and work, and they give us suitable conditions to work and learn also. Back at the graduation ceremony, the new fighters are sharing a feast with Ahmed Karate, a popular man here. The U.S. has placed a $5 million bounty on his head. He is seen as playing a key role in the planning and execution of attacks in Somalia and beyond. He's never given an interview, but while U.S. drones fly around us, he sits down with me under the canopy of the trees. Somalia is Muslim. ولكن <تصفيق> ويسكفوض هاد الديمقراطية وحوية ودين قالوا أنا جا مبدأ إن يوحنا كو أبتر سنة إنه نودي راي أنا ما دام أنا ضد مسلمين مسلم يدمقراطية مال مو ذكلا دمقراطية وحوية الحكم كان يجا إسكال شعب كإسكال أنا جا نوحنا من سنة إن الحكم إلا لله ما إسلام ده يدوم كسيدة دليلا بات صمالي قبسنا يسنا رجع بده كتير سأنا صمالي قبستان جودة هامبا ووحى أن هيك سنة إنه ويا إن إن شاء الله تعالى أن صمالي إن أن قبسنا وأن يكسني إن شاء الله تعالى. ما إسكت ده يسان إن أدوا هذا اللقى شان دولة. إحنا وسيد ده بنيمان كان دولة كم آمين سنة. عموما إن وحويان عيد كاستا أو شرعة إلهي نودي ده إن الله هذا لنا الله اللي مين. عيد إلهي شرعة ده سنو بنيس الله هذا لنا والله هذا دونا إن شاء الله وقت كده. These graduates will soon be sent into action. Al Shabaab leaders know that the West is running out of patience with the Somali government. Funding for the African Union mission here has been cut year after year, and many of their soldiers have been killed. They also have their own issues to deal with at home, and are scheduled to leave Somalia in 2024. Al Shabaab are playing a waiting game.